In this video I'm going to show you how to set up StreamAbot for IRL live streaming. By the end you'll be able to start and stop streaming in OBS when you're away from home and change to almost any scene you want in OBS. Display custom chat notifications whenever OBS has changed scenes and turn them on and off whenever you want. Show a custom alert or overlay with a chat command or channel point redemption. Make a simple countdown timer for your starting soon and any soon scenes. Write some code and more. There's a lot to unpack and each of the lessons in today's video will build upon the other so make sure you watch this one all the way through. Also, this is part 8 of an IRL live streaming series for beginners, so make sure you've seen the other videos. And based on some feedback I've received, I'm going to go at a slower pace so you can follow along with what I'm doing. Let's begin by setting up Streamerbot. Okay, firstly we're going to open the IRL live folder in OBS from an earlier video, which was part 5. I double tap on the OBS shortcut that we made in part 5. OBS is now open. I'm going to add a subfolder to IRL live. I'm going to use this tab, new folder. And we're going to name this one StreamerBot. Cool. Next, we're going to go to the StreamerBot website where we're going to download and extract the zip file into the new folder. This is for Windows. Right click, save link as. And we're going to save that into the folder StreamerBot. We're going to extract it all first. That's been done. And we'll find the exe file this one. We're going to right click to create a new shortcut and then we're going to cut and move that to the topmost folder, IRL Live, paste and rename it to Streamerbot. Double click the shortcut to open Streamerbot where we might get an error going to click on more info and run anyway. Okay, next step is to connect StreamerBot to OBS. I'm going to do that by going to Stream Apps along the top here, this tab button. I'm going to right click in this empty area, Add. I'm going to give the new connection a name and call it OBS. Make sure our version number is 5. I'm going to keep the host and port numbers the same. For the password, we'll need to get that from OBS by going to Tools, WebSocket Service Settings, Show Connect Info. I'm going to copy the server password. We can close this now, so close, cancel, and then paste our server password into the OBS connection box. Paste, check to enable auto connect on startup, and also reconnect on disconnect. Click OK. It's going to say that it's disconnected. We could wait for it to connect, but we're going to right click at the new connection and we're going to connect. Next step is to connect to Twitch. Go to Platforms. We're already on the Twitch tab right here. I'm going to go to Accounts and then log in with our Broadcaster account, that's your main one, and then you can log in with your bot account as well. Click on Login. That'll bring up an authorized page. So it's just going to scroll down to the bottom, so we're just going to click Authorize. We're now logged in with our Broadcaster account. Now we could use just our Broadcaster account to handle everything, but I also want to use my bot account. I'm using a different browser profile to do this, so that way I don't have to log in and out between one account and the other. So I'm going to Authorize for the bot account. So we're now logged into both my Broadcaster account as me and my bot account for any other sort of bot related messages, updates, that sort of thing. With StreamBot connected to OBS and Twitch, the next step is how to control OBS with a chat command. This is perfect for us as IRL live streamers because chat commands work on desktop and mobile. Basically anything with access to Twitch like a desktop browser or the mobile app. So when you're IRL you can open the Twitch app and type a chat command to for example start and stop streaming in OBS. Let's do that now. In actions, right click to add a new action. We're going to name it OBS stream stream dash start. Okay. In Triggers, right click Core, Commands, Command Triggered, Create Command. I'm going to name it OBS Stream Start. For the command, exclamation mark, Start, Location Exact, 
user permissions. I'm going to add a user. And I'm going to do a search for your username. So for myself, I'm going to type my username, Cliff Creates. Select. I'm going to click OK. And OK again. In sub actions, I'm going to right click OBS streaming then OK. To stop streaming in OBS with a chat command or take a different approach. Along the tab menu near the top go to commands right click add name OBS stream stop Command, exclamation mark, stop, with two P's, this is on purpose, location is exact, user permissions, I'm going to add a user, like before, select, and OK. Back to the actions tab, in actions, we're going to right click, OBS stream, start, and we're going to duplicate, then we're going to double click, to open the duplicate and we're going to change the name to stop. OK. In triggers, we're going to double click on the existing trigger. We want to change it to the new one. So from command, we're going to find the new command that we just added, stop. And then we're going to click OK. In the sub actions, we're going to double click on the existing sub action. For the state, we're going to change it from start to stop. OK. Sweet. Now you've got two check commands to start and stop streaming in OBS that only you can use. And you've also learned how to create a command in two ways, from the trigger area and the commands tab. You can test them with a band or test stream to Twitch or an unlisted stream to YouTube. OK. So, how do you change or delete a chat command? Remember how we spelled stop with two P's? Things like that can happen and it isn't until after you've made the command that you want to change it. Here's how. Go to commands along the tab menu near the top. Double click the command you'd like to change, OBS stream stop. Change the command to stop with one P. Okay. Removing an existing command is pretty straightforward. Right click the command you'd like to remove and you'll find this delete option from the pop-up menu. In the next step, I'm going to show you how to create a chat command to change to almost any scene you want in OBS. If you've seen all my other videos, there currently isn't a chat command that will change scenes in OBS to this one, scene cam 1 plus 2. So I'm going to show you how to make one for this scene, which you can then apply to any other scene in OBS. In actions, add a new action, name it scene cam 1 plus 2. Scene cam 1 plus 2, click OK. In triggers, right click, core, commands, command triggered, create command. For the name, we're going to name it scene cam 1 plus 2. For the command, cam 1, 2. For the location, exact. User permissions, going to add a user, add your username, select OK and OK again, just like before. In sub actions, we're going to right click OBS, set active scene, and because we're connected to OBS, we've got a list of all our scenes in OBS. We're going to choose scene cam. 1 plus 2. OK. In OBS, manually switch to the starting scene scene. Then type the command cam12 in chat to see OBS change scenes from starting soon to cam1 plus 2. I'm going to create commands for starting soon, cam1, cam2, privacy, and any soon. But if you've got no apps, you'll only need cam2 and cam1 plus 2, plus any extra scenes you might have. It's up to you. Now sometimes as a streamer you might not know what scene you're currently on. A second phone with a preview of your stream can help, but sometimes those previews can be delayed or won't play at all. This is where chat notifications of what scene you're currently on can help. Now no apps does this for you by default, but you've also got no control over how it looks. For example, this scene in OBS named Scene Cam 1 and OBS is named Scene Cam 1. But using a custom chat notification, it can say anything you want, like 
cam1, phone1 or whatever without changing the scene name and OBS. And on a related note, did you know you can turn off the notifications in no apps? Open the config file and change the value for auto switch notification to false. This will turn off chat notifications for any auto switching scenes like cam1, cam1 LBR and BRB. Okay, now back to the lesson. In actions, right click, add action and give it a name of get current scene. Okay, in triggers, right click OBS, event. For the OBS drop down, select default, or oh, actually in this case OBS. So I've got three here, and my notes it says default. Now it could be any one of these. <laughs> and for event type, well, this is all one word. Capital C, current, capital P, program, capital S, scene, capital C, changed, current, program, scene, changed. Now I've got two M's there, so I'll remove the extra M. So just make sure that's spelled correctly because you can't find it from this list. This one you've actually got to type in. Then I click OK. In sub actions, right click, core, C sharp, execute C sharp code. And get rid of this line of text and then just follow along with what I type in. So string current scene equals cph dot obs get current scene. I'm going to remove connection and replace that with a zero. Two string brackets. Next line, string, scene changed. Text, one word, equals, in quotation marks, scene changed to, semicolon. Going to use a switch statement current C. Hopefully, this will make sense in a moment. I'm going to type in case scene starting soon. You're going to do a normal colon, so not a semicolon break, semicolon, I'm just going to format this text just to tidy it up a little bit and then we're just going to copy this line for between case and break, copy, I'm going to go next line, actually we'll just do copy from here and after break, I'm going to remove starting soon and then we'll actually copy this line again. Now we're just going to type in all of our scenes from OBS. So it needs to match what's in OBS. Case scene cam1. And then again here. And go cam1 LBR. And then for this line cam2. For next one cam1 plus 2. Okay. Next one is BRB. Next line is privacy. And then finally, we've got scene ending soon. Break. This is where things change a bit. So we're going to type in default and break. Format document, tidy it up a little bit. Then for each line, we're going to add the following. So for starting soon, I'm going to add a line here. I'm going to type in CPH, scene message, bracket, scene changed text, plus quotation marks, starting soon. 
Copy that line and then maybe format document, tidy it up a little bit more and zoom out a bit. And for the next line, I change this starting scene to cab one in capitals. Or actually, maybe we'll just copy this part. So cab one, and for this one, we'll do cab one LBR. Two, cap one plus two, type in PRB, privacy, finally ending soon. Now there's an alternate version we could, could do instead. In fact, I'll just demonstrate it on this last one. It basically does the same thing. We're going to, instead of this line, we're going to replace it with a dollar sign and then and have our double quotations with our type curly bracket scene changed text close curly bracket and starting sue now this basically does the same thing but it kind of keeps it a little bit tidier so let me just check that this is working we haven't got any errors we're going to click on the compile button so it's going to check the code for us and there's no errors. Usually if there's an error it's because there's a missing semicolon or maybe this one here which is a colon. Perhaps that's a semicolon. So if we just replace that with a semicolon or we'll try and compile the code. So as you can see there's an error. I think it has that message there. Yeah it's supposed to be a colon instead of a semicolon. Or perhaps if this one is named incorrectly this way we put an E compile the code and it says this doesn't exist because the names and even the case has to match so case as in if that's a lowercase instead of an uppercase these have to match so that lowercase c is incorrect just to explain it a little bit when you're on a scene it's going to say scene change two starting soon or scene change two camp one we'll compile it one more time yes it's compiled we'll save and compile our code see what's happening on Twitch. Oh, it is actually working. It's just this isn't updating. Uh, it's ignoring my bot. That's why. So let's see. I'm going to go cph.sendmessage. Bot. Now I forget if that's supposed to be true or one or zero. Let's do uh, false and then we'll compile. So let's replace these and we'll go cam1 and as you can see it is updating oh we've got no space so we want to add a space to our line of text let's see we can just add it here scene change to space so we'll try that again go cam1 so now it's nicely formatted scene change to cam1 Scene change to cam1 LBR. Scene change to cam2. So great, works perfectly. So what does this all do? Well, whenever the current program, not the previous scene in OBS has changed, this event, current program scene changed, is triggered. The code gets the current scene, and if it matches one of the scene names, it does whatever. We've used it for chat notifications, but the same code could be used for anything you want that's scene specific, like muted music on one scene, but unmuted on others, text on one scene, but different text on another. But how do you turn them chat notifications on and off with a chat command? Here's how. In actions, add an action, chat notification on, on. In triggers, right click, core, commands, commands triggered, create command. For the name, chat notifications on. The command, see notes on. Location, exact. Group permissions. We're going to make it so that moderators can use this command. Click OK and OK. In sub actions, we're going to right click core actions, set action state right here. Action select get current scene from the list, select state is enabled. Click OK. Back to actions. 
going to duplicate the chat notification on. Oops, do we misspell that? So let's just rename it chat notifications on. I'm going to duplicate and then we're going to rename it to chat notifications off. In triggers, we're going to double click on the existing one. We're going to create a command. This time we're going to call this one chat notifications off. For the command, we're going to do exclamation mark C notes off location to exact. We also want moderators to be able to use it from group permissions. We're going to select moderators, add them to the allowed list. OK. Then we can click OK again. In sub actions, we're going to double click on the existing sub action and then we're going to change the state to disabled. Click OK. In chat, type the command C notes off. Check if the action has been disabled in Streamerbot. Then navigate to a couple of scenes to see if chat notifications have been turned off. Now in chat, type the command C notes on. Check if the action has been re enabled in Streamerbot. Then navigate to a couple of scenes to see if chat notifications have been turned back on again. In chat, I'm going to type exclamation mark C notes off. The action is still enabled. Let's just double check that. C notes off. I'm going to go over to our commands tab. C notes off. Okay, that is correct. Try again. C notes off. Oh, it's because our action isn't set to disabled. So we're going to click OK. Then we're going to just double check our C notes on. So it is enabled. Great, so now it should work. Let's try that again. Now as you can see, get current scene is now red color, which means it's not going to work anymore. So if we change to different scenes, we're not going to get those notifications and chat as to what scene we're currently on. So that's good, perfect. C notes on, type that in chat. Keep an eye on our action here. So get current scene is now re-enabled. So if we go to starting scene, cam one, you're going to notice there that our notifications are now working again. Let's take what you've learned so far and add Channel Point Redemptions into the mids. Keep in mind you'll need to be in a Twitch affiliate or partner program to use Channel Points. You can of course use chat commands and add the redemption part later. In fact, let's do that now. In OBS, we're going to add a new scene and name it Nested Alerts. We're going to move it below the existing scene, Nested Alerts. I'm going to move it below those, all the other scenes, right to the very bottom. Then we're going to drag and drop a file, a video image, from the assets folder we set up in part 5. Turn off the visibility, then we're going to go to a cam one scene, I'm going to add a scene from this plus button. There's nested alerts, so that's been added. I'm going to lock the source so it can't be changed. Back in Streamerbot, in actions, we're going to add an action and give it a name, alert example. In triggers, we're going to right click, core, commands, command triggered, create command for the name, alert example. For the command, we're going to use exclamation mark example location to exact and we want everyone to use this one so we're not going to change anything to the group or user permissions but we are going to add a cooldown so that it can't be spammed for global and user cooldown we're going to add 300 which is a cooldown period of five minutes five minutes should be should be good also remember to test this with another account or login because there's no cooldown for your broadcaster account you have to use a different account so maybe your your bot account click ok ok again in sub actions we're going to right click obs sources set source visibility state connection we're just going to leave that as is for scene we want to choose nested alerts and then we've got our new source which should be named source MS example. So I am going to click OK and then in OBS I'm going to go to nested alerts. I need to rename the source to source MS example. I'm going to go back to here. 
in the sub actions in streamer bot double click and as you can see it's already been updated for us that's great but we did have to double click it because it is showing the old name the state we want it to be visible now we're going to add a delay for the length of the video file with a little extra room so if we go back to our source and we turn the visibility on we'll see that it is around about 12 seconds so we want a little extra headroom for that so i'm just going to turn the visibility off yeah so we're going to want about maybe a delay of 14 seconds or 14,000 milliseconds i'm going to right click core delay we're going to enter in 14,000 milliseconds or 14 seconds and click OK. Then we're going to duplicate the source visibility state, duplicate sub action, and we're going to double click that, change the visibility to hidden, and we'll click OK. And we're going to use a check command to be able to use this. We'll type example. Actually, we'll just change our scene to cam1 first. We'll type in our command. If we check the nested alerts scene, you'll see that it is, it's now hidden. Okay, go back to cam1. You see our chat notification has worked. All right, to trigger this with a channel point redemption, go to platforms along the top tabbed menu, Twitch, channel point rewards, Going to right click to add a channel point reward. Going to give it a title of example. The cost we're going to leave it as one channel point for this example. Prompt, you are a champion or whatever. We're going to leave all the other fields for now. Then we're going to click OK. All right, we're going to go back to the actions tab and our alert example action. In triggers, we're going to add a new trigger by right clicking Twitch. From the list channel reward reward redemption and then we're going to select the new reward from the drop down list which is example and then click on ok open twitch chat in a browser window where you'll see the newly created example reward I'm going to redeem it for one channel point and as you can see there it is in the last step, I'm going to show you how to create a simple countdown for your starting soon and ending soon scenes by typing a single command for each. But before we do that, I think it might help if you understand the order of commands you can use. Starting changes to starting soon scene in OBS. Start starts streaming in OBS. Start CD starts a countdown from 3 to 1 after which the scene in OBS switches from starting soon to cam 1. Ending changes to the ending soon scene in OBS. End CD starts a different countdown from 3 to 1 after which OBS will stop streaming. If you got no else, you'll already have some of these as chat commands. But keeping everything the same might make it easier if you decide to swap between no Alps and loop SRT or to something else in the future. In actions, right click scene starting soon and duplicate. Double click to open the duplicate and rename it to starting soon countdown. Going to click OK. In triggers, you can create a command like we did earlier, but name it start CD. That looks good. Click OK. Alternatively, you could run this action after typing the start command. To do that in actions, Add a delay of about 10 to 15 seconds or however long it'll think it'll take for the stream to show that it's live on Twitch, YouTube or wherever. So add a delay, let's say 15,000 milliseconds. Right click, core, actions, run action. From the drop down box, we'll select scene starting soon countdown. OK. That's one other way you could run this countdown. Although I personally prefer to make sure my stream is live on Twitch. So in my case, I'm just going to remove that bit of code we just added. We don't need to show that again. We'll remove that other line. Then, oops, we need to update some of these. So that one's currently set to privacy. We'll change that to starting soon. Let's go through all of our scenes. Privacy, any soon is set to privacy as well. <laughs> So we'll go update that one. Cam two. Okay, yep, these are these are correct. Cam one, cam one plus two, cam two, ending soon, 
privacy starting soon. And our last one, set to privacy, we don't need that because this is going to do something else completely different. So we've got something that will initiate the countdown. In sub actions, we're going to right click OBS sources, set GDI text connection. We're going to leave it on default. For scene, we are going to choose scene starting soon. The source to be source starting soon text. So I'll just change it to that scene in OBS. We've got this bit of text which says starting soon. We're going to change the text to three. We're going to click OK. Then we're going to add a delay of one second. And in milliseconds, one second is 1000. We're going to duplicate the GDI text and then change the text to two. We're going to duplicate the delay, then the GDI text again and change that to one. One more time for the delay and then again for the GDI text. This time we're going to change our text to let's go. Click OK. Now change our scenes to cam one. Then we're going to type in starting. That's going to change our scenes to starting soon. I'm going to type in start CD. It's going to say three, two, one. Let's go. Now one last thing. So I'm actually going to add a delay. I'm going to add a slightly longer delay of let's say three seconds and we're going to change the scene to cam one obs dead active scene to cam one so what will happen is we would type in starting to change to the starting scene scene which we're already on and then we'll type start cd and then i'll say three two one let's go after three seconds, change to the cam one c Now you will of course need to have your mobile phone broadcasting to OBS. Otherwise your, your disconnect protection app is going to go to BRB. So make sure you've done that before you start streaming. Finally, let's duplicate what we've done for the ending soon scene, but with a little RGB flare. Type the command starting in chat to change OBS to the starting soon scene. From the sources doc, I've got a background image, which I've applied a couple of filters. I'm going to right click, filters and you'll notice I've got two filters there one which is red and one which is green the only difference between them being color multiply which is red for the red filter and green for the green filter now they're just random colors they could be any kind of green or red in this case this red for this filter and for green we've got this green for this filter now we're going to add one more filter which will be blue R, G, and B. Click the plus button down here and add a color correction filter. I'm going to rename it to blue, click OK, and then for color multiply, we're going to select a blue color like this one. And you'll notice our background image is now blue color. We turn the visibility on and off for each one of these filters. We've got red, we've got green, and we've got blue RGB. Okay, we're going to close this window. Okay, back in Streamerbot, in Actions, right click Scene Starting Soon Countdown, Duplicate. Double click to open the duplicate, then rename it to Ending Soon, Scene Ending Soon Countdown, then OK. In Triggers, create a new chat command in CD. OK. In Sub Actions, double click the first GDI text, Connection default, scene, ending soon, source, ending soon text, text 3. Okay, double click and do the same for the next GDI text. Connection default, scene, ending soon, source, source, ending soon text 2. Then for the third one, connection default, scene, ending soon, source, ending soon text 1. Except for the last one's text, which should say something like thanks. So this one here, we're going to double click for the scene, ending soon, source, source, ending soon, text, text, thanks. Okay, change the last delay to 10 seconds, just 10,000 milliseconds. Then we're going to remove the last sub action, right click, OBS, streaming. And then we want OBS to stop streaming. OK. Right click. OBS. Sources. Or set source filter state. Connection default scene should be 
scene ending soon. Source, source image background, filter, red. Want it to be visible for the state. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to duplicate the filter. I'm going to drag one just below the first GDI text. I'm going to move the second duplicate just below the second GDI text. I'm going to change the visibility to hidden. So we're going to type ending to change scenes in OBS to the ending scene scene. Then end CD to see what it does. We're going to duplicate red visible. For the filter, we're going to change that to green and OK. I'm going to just drag that below red hidden and then we're going to duplicate the green filter and we're going to change that to hidden. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to move that filter state just below the next GDI text. Right click and duplicate green hidden. This time we're going to change the filter to blue and the state to visible and we'll duplicate it again. Move the first one just below green hidden and then we're going to double click blue visible, change the state to hidden and then move that just below next GDI text. So let's see, I'm going to make sure we're getting this right. So we've got red visible for three, then it's hidden when we're on the countdown for two but green is visible. For one, green is hidden, blue is now visible, and then on the last one, which is any soon text or thanks, blue will be hidden. It's gonna wait for 10 seconds and then stop streaming. Let's try that. So we're gonna type in cam12, which will take us to the cam one plus two scene, then ending, which will take us to the ending soon scene in OBS, then end CD. I'm going to go to execute. For ending soon, you could add cph.obs set gdi text. So that's what we want. For scene, we need to change this bit. Oh, actually. Maybe this might work in here. So if we type this, maybe. <laughs> and then for source, I'm gonna replace that with uh, double quotation marks. It is source dash ending soon dash text. And then the text we want it to say ending soon. Oh, actually this should also be ending soon. How did I miss that? And then for connection, that could be zero. Compile, uh, inline string, okay, so that can't be it. We'll just do it this way. So quotation marks, scene, ending soon, compile, it is working now. So if we go privacy scene and then change to ending soon, that text will change for us. It'll say ending soon. So let's just try that again. I'm gonna go cam, one, two, it's going to change to cam one plus two scene. Then we'll go exclamation mark ending to go to the ending scene scene. And then we could type in end CD. We'll say three, two, one, and thanks. After 10 seconds, it'll stop streaming in OBS. But this is just the beginning. We've barely scraped the surface of what Streamerbot can do. So make sure you're subscribed and have notifications turned on for the next one. For example, wouldn't it be better to replace all these chat commands with an IRL stream deck? Skip all the typing for the tap of a button. You really don't want to miss that video, which when it's ready, will be right over here. And because Lightbox had C over there.